part of the, the training uh, for all candidates, I know, for, for the CVQs and the NVQs, yeah? The matter of entrepreneurship came up briefly this morning as well. And uh, just to say, certainly within the primary and secondary uh, system, we are using junior achievement to drive entrepreneurship, which is really to plant the seed in our children so that as they grow, they can start making choices in that direction. A very creative initiative at the primary level, uh, which we adopted through junior achievement and uh, by sponsorship from Rotary International, is what we call Biz Town. And this is an area within the Ministry of Education, one of our locations, where we have about 12 shop fronts that are sponsored by private companies, uh, Burger King, for example, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, someone from the telecommunications uh, company, someone from an agricultural company, a security company, and so there's a specific curriculum that the students do at grade five at the primary level. And each student who has gone through that curriculum, which lasts for, I think it's about uh, 40 hours, they go on, on a field trip to Bistown. Uh, before they get there, they actually select which of the shop fronts they want to work in, whether they want to be the general manager, whether they want to be a cashier, whether they want to be the lawyer for persons who are coming in for services, they are actually paid, and at the end of the day, they actually go to the bank to redeem their, their, their funds. But it's not really cash that they receive, it's really some kind of services and recognition. And it's amazing to see these young people actually performing their role. We have a video and documentation that we can share with you and what is happening now is that we have about 10,000 of our 40,000 cohort passing through, and the ministry has taken the decision to introduce this module into all our primary schools starting this school year. At the secondary level, there is a more advanced junior achievement entrepreneurship career-related program, which starts at the grade nine, and this is just being implemented. Again, it is planting that seed. I think Dr. Cornwall, perhaps uh, Dr. Amanda may want to speak about uh, the entrepreneurship component that the, the, the bigger students now who are in training also participate in. Good evening, everyone. Okay, uh, from the Hatteras NTA standpoint, we have a department devoted to entrepreneurship. It's called the Business Development Unit. And that unit drives entrepreneurship among the, the students in the institution. For every course within the institution, entrepreneurship is, entrepreneurial studies is a mandatory module that they must do. And in this module, they have to complete a business plan, implement that business plan, while they are in school and then um, towards the end of the program we have what we call an entrepreneurship day where all the businesses come together and they are evaluated at that point in time the funds that they make from the business the, the, the seed capital that went into the business goes back to the students, but whatever profit that comes from it goes into the welfare fund to assist other student, needy students in the institutions. So entrepreneurship is alive and well within the Hatteras NTA. Okay, and we have recently introduced the starter kit where students who are completing their studies and um, want to go into um, entrepreneurial business for themselves, they actually apply to the business development unit. They are assessed, and based on um, what they plan to do, they get what we call a starter kit to start their businesses. Um, from, the career, from the career advancement program position, we use the same CEFE model of course, that is address, addressing the unattached youth, which is, of course, through the Hartrust NTA and CSEC. What we basically do with those um, is have regional competition where the students compete 
both tertiary and high. And we have regional competition and then national competition. Then what eventually happened is that the, the company like Sandals or you know, large hotels give the winners or the second place run up or the third place run up. They will give them um, you know, weekend or for two or they will give them the passes to come and enjoy with their family. So we have very creative things and then the top national winner is the winner now who is poised to go internationally to compete because again, you want to benchmark best practices internationally in the US. So we have, a very, we have various programs, as we said, using either the CSEC um, Cape model or using the CEFE methodology, which is an Italian CEFE. Right. But they're making their products, but they may not be marketing them well. And they may not have the entrepreneurial skills. And we go to them wherever they are. They may, they may be in the rural area. Wherever we find them, we get together and we try to improve their business processes to help them to become better entrepreneurs. What it is saying is that TVET is not only confined to those young people who come into our institutions, but it's for those women with children who cannot come to class regularly and those who are already in employment. Thank you. We can only take one more question. One more question, please. Go ahead. I also want to thank you guys for the presentations. My name is Vladimir Kleimurig. I'm a superintendent of uh, schools, but I'm working at the public school board. Oh, uh, you get that, you are there? Oh, you okay. have, similar to the US, superintendent. Oh. Yeah, and um, I was very curious uh, about the implementations. Every change or innovation will bring like uh, resistance, oh. especially with teachers. And I would like to hear about the do's and don'ts uh, when we're going to ex implement such a uh, system. Thank you. Again, um, I guess the CEO best address that because, um, you know, um, she having the experience of transitioning from the Heart Trust, the National Training Agency, and to go into a system like the Ministry of Education where it's so big on classical education and therefore to bring TVET in based on, and for her to have fought two to nail to um, get a TVET policy in 2014 enacted, then of course I think she is the best person to address it, um, such what you're saying. Yes, there, there will always be resistance. And I, the perception, as was articulated in some of the presentations, uh, has been quite negative when it comes to uh, TVET. And even in 2015, there are some learned educators who still believe that it's for those persons who are not very good with their heads who are to be channeled in that direction. So not all Jamaicans have made that transition to understand how important TVET is, is, is to uh, industry and the development of the economy. And just one example, you come into these lovely hotels and we sit on nice chairs and we are very cool one would not imagine and understand the kind of work that would have gone into the building itself to make it conducive. The chairs that you are sitting on, the decor of the room, the food that we have enjoyed so much. Sometimes we take these for granted, but it is actually TVET at work in its truest sense. Now, I have found, having been at this for the last five years in the Ministry of Education, that the the, 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 what, what took it to the next level was actually the support from our Minister of Education. So when he took office in 2012 and the first presentation on TVET was made, since then, every Monday morning, I have to give a report in our meeting with him on how we are progressing with TVET. 
Immediately as he got the presentation, he needed a cabinet submission, he needed a ministry paper for parliament, and he just started out on the campaign, did his research, and in all his speeches, he will speak about his education as a Rhodes Scholar and where it has got him, but perhaps he, if he was in uh, the practical areas, he would have even been much further. So automatically, if the minister is the champion, then the local, ordinary Jamaican person is going to get on board. So it started there. It actually started with the previous minister, but I think this one just took whatever we had developed and moved ahead with it. Now, by virtue of the position that I hold in the ministry, it's an advantage because my job is to ensure that those who are to implement do implement. And so it is a part of their operational plans. They have to report on a monthly basis. I go through in very details in terms of what they're doing. The curriculum development, because I have the opportunity of signing off on all the documents before they go out into the schools. I am reviewing word for word for the application of STEM. I am looking in detail at the areas within TVET that are being implemented. And so I have taken up the championship, if I should call it, of ensuring that through my forceful personality and my position, I get it embedded. I also did one other thing, and it's really to tell my colleagues in 2012, 2013, I traveled the entire island, and I met with all the principals and some of the TVET educators, and I told them that they had to step up their game. TVET is not about when the children do their practical, then as a teacher you take out as much as, they have, as you want out of what they have prepared and you eat and you have a full belly and the children have not learned the concepts the application in terms of the preparation i also indicated to them that the documents that we produce they are to be the most attractive the functions that we stage they must be well executed based on the profession and whatever we do must be at a certain standard I said to them, if you want your colleagues in other areas to respect what you do, then you must make sure that you are operating at that level. And finally, we aligned ourselves to some winners. So, for example, the Maritime Institute is a winner by virtue of that's the industry that is moving into the future. There's a lot in terms of the logistics hub and what our young people are expected to do. And as I said this morning, if you talk about money, they are interested. And so we identify some winners of like our, our, our own Dr. Fritz Spinock, who is very charismatic and can sell ice to Eskimos. And we use him as our keynote speaker to present and to show them a different perspective in terms of how things operate. And so Jamaicans are getting the message. Of course, we who are here today, and through our chairman, Dr. Cornwall, when we go back to Jamaica, you are not going to hear the end of this in terms of us coming here and the presentations and the reception. So there's going to be a press release that goes out. And so, of course, persons will now start understanding that TVET has a future. And they will, of course, jump onto that bandwagon as we move forward. Just to endorse one minute um, what Grace has said, it's a continuous process. It never ends. It's ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. We have been at this since 1982 and still, still, still at it. I think that when you ask the question about getting teachers on board, you mean secondary school teachers. Because we don't have a problem in the technical tertiary institutions. But schools seem to be different places with different power structures. And we don't have a problem with technical teachers in the secondary schools. They welcome the program. It's the academic teachers and, and a lot of the administrators in the schools are academic people. So you first target the administrators. Schools where you have 
the administrator on board move quickly. They move quickly to get the resources, they move quickly to get the teachers trained and get the, um, the TVET um, training expanded and delivered in the school. What we are doing now, we are looking for successes. Those people that you talked about, this young lady talked about, people who came through the TV, we are putting those, we are doing the videos and putting those on our website. When we have national events, we will bring them to, bring one or two of them to speak as the feature speaker. And this will help cascade your winners as they come on board. These are some of the things you can do. I know um, earlier, one of your colleagues at the back there asked me, how do you get the teachers to come to workshops in the summer? Well, we really work with the Ministry of Education. It is driven from the highest level. So Dr. McLean has the, the schedule for the summer of, for the workshops and the sessions and it is communicated to them in advance. We also work with the unions. Dr. McLean, I think it's better for you to speak to this. But there are other stakeholders that we work with in assigning training days. So they may see the summer ha as their holiday, but we work with the different stakeholders to say, yes, you are on holiday, but professional development is very important. As a teacher, you have to do it because it is the right thing to do. So we find that they come on and they are realizing that they are getting additional competencies. So you may be an IT teacher, but you are coming on to learn about graphic design, which is very current. And they, they begin to own the process. They see how it relates to their own growth and development. We work with all the stakeholders, and it is driven from the highest level. Okay, and finally, before I hand over to your minister, I just want to let you know, from a business perspective, Dr. McLean spoke to, yes, the issues that arise, you know, um, based on her, um, you know, position as CEO, but in essence, Having worked with her, we clearly understand, and we have to face the reality. One of the things I realize, I recognize your education system is probably set up different, where you probably have a department of education that deals, that's why you have a, a, a what you call a, um, that's why you have superintendent, uh, really, and, and there the ministry functions, and, and I think that's where our country, Jamaica, is actually going, right, Dr. McLean? As a matter of fact, she's heading back now to, um, to have a the launch of the Department of School Services. And of course, everyone will know who will head that. So um, I don't need to say that. I leave that until that public announcement is made locally. However, um, one of the things you have to understand, you heard Dr. McLean spoke about the previous government. One, is, one of the things they had to do, you have to fire some people. And it's a hardcore reality. Some people has to go, they must go, because they stand there as the vanguard of the system. They must go to their yard. And it's just the reality. I'm not putting it up. You see, I come from private sector, and it's the reality. You're not functioning, you go home. And, and Dr. McLean knows that very well. Because as a private sector I person, I tell her point blank, I am not working with this person. They have to go because I would have tried everything. I am not going to hide under the disguise and pretty up anything. So that's one of the things you have to, because people are not going to change unless they are prepared to change. And that's good. So, in closing, let me hand over to the most honorable, or your honorable minister, Mrs. Ireland. Thank you. It was quite a day, wasn't it? Very valuable day. And I'm going to keep it very short. I just asked Ms. 
Martha Brown as Secretary General of UNESCO, because it is a joint venture of UNESCO being part of our ministry, to say some words, because it's so important for you to know that it's the effort of UNESCO also to have these type of uh, activities, let me say it just shortly that. And we want to thank you, each and one of you. I can't embrace you <laughs> one by one, but I'll do it just now, later on, when we... I really want, the vote of thanks was in the beginning, yeah, but I, I want to that. repeat it <laughs> again. I want to repeat and not read it out, but we really want to express our gratitude for you being here. And I see the reaction of the people that are still here. We are still here. <laughs> And we know you will be with us to continue. When we continue we are with our conferences, with smaller sessions in Curacao, and then to invite you again to the larger session. Maybe sooner than you think. <laughs> so thank you for being here and for being here. And hope that we can continue together to make a change, make a difference with the education of Curacao. Thank you, Minister. Good evening, everyone, panelists. For us, for us of UNESCO, for us, everyone see me, remember me? Okay. For us of UNESCO, the National Commission in Curacao, it has been a pleasure for this joint venture with the Ministry of Education, Science, Culture, and Sport to organize the first TVET conference in Curacao. We hope that we will organize together with the ministry in future more of these conferences on a yearly basis at least. <laughs> Furthermore, I just came back from Montego Bay yesterday where we had a UNESCO meeting for Secretaries General and when I informed Mr. Parua, who is the program specialist for education that we are holding our first TVET conference. He was highly delighted, <laughs> very excited, and he asked me to extend congratulations to our minister and also the chairperson of our national commission for taking this initiative and accepting the help of Dr. Cornwall to organize this very important one-day TVET conference in Curacao. Without further, <laughs> okay. without further ado, since it was done, gratuity on your part, we don't know how to thank you, but we do have a token of appreciation for you, which is a catalog of a traveling exhibition that took place in Curacao in 1997, if I'm not mistaken. So we have one for each of you. Mr. Maduro, can we welcome you up front? You're part of this success today. Thank you also. We invite um, persons down, starting with Ms. Jennifer Walker to be joining us here. Because we are getting ready now with your head to the little get to the or, or get together where we can mingle. And I heard that most of you don't want to leave yet until next week. <laughs> <laughs> they want they want to go and stimulate the economy. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Dr. Ro Amande. <laughs> Followed by Dr. Janet Dyer.
followed by Dr. Paulette Dunpeer. Followed by Dr. Grace McLean. <laughs> Followed by Mr. Eastman. Age Before Beauty, followed by Mr. Pinock, Dr. Pinock. <laughs> followed by Mr. Everett Riley. Followed by your own countryman, Dr. Mur Murder. 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 And of course, yours truly.